For this lesson, use the Create New Design from File tool to open the Vice Fusion Archive file, then save the design to your working project. Autodesk Fusion 360 uses joints to remove degrees of freedom from components. The way joints work is to assume that when you select two components, all degrees of freedom between the two components will be removed. By choosing a different joint type after the selection has been made, you can release degrees of freedom to incorporate the type of motion that you need in your assembly. In this assembly, there are multiple joints already placed. If I turn the visibility of the joints on, you can see some of them displayed. Different icons display different types of joint conditions. Expanding the joints folder, you can see there are three different types of joints applied in this model. Rigid, Revolute, and Slider. We'll focus more on placing joints in another exercise, but let's start one just to understand the basic process. Switching to the Assemble tools, I'll start the Joint tool. This will open a dialog on the right, where I can choose which type of joint I'd like to apply first. You do not have to select the type of joint you're placing before you can start making the selection of components. For now, we'll just switch it to rigid. The dialog is currently looking for the first component. As I hover over a component, you'll see multiple icons appear on the face that I'm hovering over. Point icons indicate endpoints. Triangles indicate the midpoint of an edge or arc. The square icon will show you the centroid of the face, and crosses show you the center of arcs or circles. As you move to other faces, you'll see the same type of icon appear. As you move to edges, you'll see that based on the direction you're coming from, as you near certain points, you can get the joint origin to align to different faces at the same point. For a simple example, I'll select the midpoint of the bottom of this face. Now this part is faded out. In Fusion 360, once a component is selected, you cannot select it again, so it naturally fades out. We'll take another point of view and find another location on the assembly. Now I can choose another point on any other component. You'll get the same icons every time, so it gives you a nice consistent workflow. We'll just select the midpoint of the bottom of this face as the other component origin. You'll see the icon for the rigid joint as displayed in the model. You'll also see axes where we can change the location of the joint or the rotation of the joint. The rigid joint itself keeps all degrees of freedom removed from the component. If I switch the joint type to Revolute, that will release one rotational degree of freedom. As an option in the Revolute joint, you can choose about which axis that degree of freedom will be. Switching to Slider. Slider introduces one translational degree of freedom. As with Revolute, you can choose which axis that degree of freedom will be along. Cylindrical has one transitional and one rotational degree of freedom. Pin slot also has one translational and one rotational degree of freedom, but the rotation is normal to the direction of the translation. Planar offers two translational and one rotational degree of freedom. And the last one, Ball, offers no translational degrees of freedom, but three rotational degrees of freedom. As you begin working on your own designs, you'll find that the selection of the correct joint is much more natural than it might seem right now. But these are concepts to keep in mind as you develop your skills and as you explore Fusion 360 in the rest of this course.